Welcome to this introduction to the paintings and drawings by Evelyn de Morgan on exhibition at the Lang Art Gallery, Newcastle. I'm Sarah Richardson, Keeper of Art, and I'm joined by Anna Flynn Young, Conservator. Hi. I don't know much about Evelyn de Morgan, so I'm really excited to be shown around by you today, Sarah. I've enjoyed unwrapping the pictures and doing condition checks but I really want to know a bit more about the artist as well. Evelyn de Morgan was a successful artist at a time when women faced many obstacles in establishing a career. Determined and talented she went to the Slade School of Art in London where she won prizes. It was at this time that she started using her middle name of Evelyn which was most often a man's name at the time. It meant that her work would be judged on its merits and not dismissed by sexist critics. This is one of the first paintings in the exhibition. It's titled Night and Sleep, and Evelyn painted it in 1878. It owes quite a lot to the figure style of the Renaissance master Sandro Botticelli. The picture shows the symbolic figure of night flying across the sky, his cloak drawing darkness across the land. He holds in his arms the figure of sleep, who drops poppies on the earth beneath. Poppies were associated with sleep because opium poppies were used to produce laudanum, which was used as a sleeping medicine in Victorian times. Alongside Night and Sleep, we have the painting of the poor man who saved the city. The precise detail of much of the picture, the medieval setting, and Evelyn's use of symbols seem to be influenced by pre-Raphaelite art. Here we have a wise man whose advice saved the city from a siege, saved it from war, but now he is ignored and forgotten, sitting outside the city walls. In the background, a procession of people celebrate the city's deliverance. At the man's feet, the bag of money on the ground shows his disdain for worldly wealth, but the brambles indicate the difficulties of his path in life. The pages of the book tell the story, which is from the Old Testament of the Bible. Moving round the gallery, we come to this picture. Its title, Lux in Tenebri, or Light in Darkness, is a quotation from the Bible where Christ is referred to as the light that shines in the darkness. But Evelyn has represented spiritual enlightenment or spiritual hope as a beautiful young woman. Her figure glows with light and her dress is decorated with golden flames. She holds aloft an olive branch, symbol of peace. Our conservator, Anna, has examined the picture in detail and has some insights into how it was painted. Yes, apart from being an absolutely beautiful picture, my conservator's eye was immediately drawn to it because I can see that some alterations have been done to it. So if you look up in the top corner, you can see where the olive branch is that originally she was holding what looks possibly like a torch of reeds, so at some point, Evelyn's decided that instead of the woman holding the light, the woman will become the light. Also, the technique that she used to do the painting was she completely covered the canvas underneath the painting with gold leaf before painting on top of it. And this gives the, the whole painting a really shimmering quality and it um, you, can see the, you can see the gold coming through in the rays of light and also in some of the areas of the dress where the decoration is. But also, if you, if you look in the darker areas in the, in the background and if you move down to where the um, crocodiles are, you can see that this, this beautiful golden light is shining through the darkness of the colours and it gives it a very special iridescent quality, which is absolutely beautiful. Despite the beautiful glow, the crocodiles are probably meant to represent evil, or the spiritual ugliness of life on earth, compared with the beauty of the spirit world. 
Next we have the massive painting of Our Lady of Peace. The Virgin Mary has appeared as a vision to a knight who is praying before going off to battle. A rainbow representing everlasting life, since a rainbow has no end, streams around the figure of the Virgin Mary. Evelyn painted the picture in her studio in Italy, where she and her husband, William, spent six months of the year. After the outbreak of the First World War in 1914, this massive picture and the contents of Evelyn's Italian studio had to be shipped back to London. I love the fact that we've got the preparatory studies for this picture. It's really nice to see how all of the figures were worked out. And it's really interesting to see how she's used little dark-haired Italian children and somehow or other they've morphed into golden-haired angels. The painting on the adjoining wall is known as The Captives, though we don't know what title Evelyn herself gave to the picture. She painted it in about 1915. The young woman standing in the centre of the scene looks around, sensing danger, but she seems unable to see the dragons, which are whirling around her head. On the left, one dragon has managed to creep under the arm of the young woman wearing blue. You could say this picture is a great allegory of the present pandemic. We have the invisible threat sensed but not seen by these women. Obviously these ladies haven't heard about social distancing though, that would be my only worry. Evelyn's reaction to the outbreak of the First World War was one of horror. Her response was a painting titled 1914 and this is the compositional study. Evelyn described the scene as a threatening horror dawning on peace and plenty and those entities are the two young women at the front of the painting. The threatening horror is the man with dark wings in the background who is appearing from the smoke of a volcano, a link to the underworld. This is definitely one of her more darker paintings. Most of her paintings seem to be about hope and light and peace and this one really does seem to be quite um, menacing. It's one of the few menacing pictures, even with all of the dragons and monsters, this, this one feels very menacing. Across the gallery we have a painting titled The Red Cross, accompanied by some interesting sketches. The picture was the centrepiece of Evelyn's 1916 exhibition at her studio in London and she held that in aid of the Red Cross charity. In the picture, the blood-red robes of Christ allude to the deaths of so many in the First World War, as well as to the Red Cross charity itself. In the pastel sketch, there's a flurry of angels throwing up their arms in grief, and Christ has a sorrowful expression. However, the painting has a different, more serene and devotional character. You're right, the painting is so much calmer than the sketch. The sketch, apart from having a lot more movement, it's far more miserable. All of the angels have got sad faces, they're all crying. You've got quite a large flaming building in the background, whereas in the, in the painting it's been reduced in size and is, is far off in the distance. And more to the forefront is the the crosses. The expanse of graves is really Evelyn's only direct reference to the carnage of war. Moving to the opposite side of the gallery and moving back down the room, I'd like to focus on a picture on the right. It's titled The Passing of the Soul at Death and it was painted in the later years of Evelyn's career. It shows the torch of life falling from a woman's hand, about to be extinguished in the water below her feet. This is another one of Evelyn's pictures with dragons and rainbows. She seems quite obsessed with them. I think if I was naming this exhibition, it would definitely be called Dragons and Rainbows. 
my seven-year-old daughter would absolutely love this exhibition. So in this picture, we have the, the winged serpent or the dragon seemingly whispering in her, her ear, trying to capture her soul. And then we have the spirit of the rainbow of hope beckoning her to the, to the light. It's really quite beautiful. This exhibition is a rare opportunity to see a large group of paintings and drawings by Evelyn de Morgan together. The exhibition dates have been extended, so please have a look at our website for further information. A partner exhibition of ceramics designed by Evelyn's husband, William de Morgan, is also on show.